Hello and welcome back to our continuing coverage of CES 2023. This morning I'm heading to Samsung Display and we're going to talk about everything you need to know about the 2023 QD OLED TVs. So 2023, an exciting year, we're back face to face once again. Um, QD OLED really changed the landscape in terms of TV last year. How do you better that? What's new this year? Uh, thanks, Phil. Uh, thank you for that praise and comment. Uh, definitely QD OLED did raise the bar of what a display can do in 2022. But 2023 is even more exciting. Uh, let me share and go through a few details. First of all, let me, uh, what I want to claim and share with your community is that the QD OLED 2023 is not a kind of a cosmetic change. It has a re-engineered and a renewed soul. So what is the QD OLED 2023? Our second generation panels are capable of more than 2000 nits of extreme peak brightness. And this is real brightness, this is color luminance. We're not talking about any hacks or using a white boost. This is true RGB that is creating these fantastic visuals. The second thing is that the 2023 panels have an extended two times more durable than our own 2022 uh, industry leading performance of our 2022 panels. And thirdly, all of this comes with a smaller carbon footprint. So they're more power efficient and they meet even the stringent uh, EU ERP norms for 2023. So what is behind this improvement in performance? There are two things. Let me go through the tech stack. Number one is what we call our hyper-efficient EL. This is an advanced EL material that has been developed for Samsung in order to increase the light resonance as well as reduce the internal light reflection which ensures that more light is coming out as well as because of the increased resonance the intensity of light coming out is also enhanced so you get 30 percent brighter screens than our own 2022 panels which did set the benchmark in what uh, how bright a qd can uh, how bright an oled can be the second thing is our improved pixel optimization engine here we are using our advanced ai to offer what we call IntelliSense AI version 2.0. And this does two things. Number one, it improves the pixel performance at a sub-pixel level in real time by coordinating and predicting any kind of discrepancy. So whether it's uh, you know, uh, light output, uh, pixel load, all of these factors are very finely controlled in real time. The second thing is the range of operations. So any of these uh, engine optimization, pixel optimization algorithms have a certain range till which they are uh, effective. And we have expanded that range to ensure that you not only get a great display, but you can enjoy it and buy it with confidence. Uh, so one of the big advantages of QD OLED is the color volume. And that's something that other OLEDs are, are not able to match. Why is that? Sure. So QD OLEDs are truly additive RGB display. So it's a triluminance display. What that means is that all the colors, all the light, whether it's white or any of the colors between white and black, are created using R, G, and B. Other OLEDs had, uh, or the traditional OLED, uses a white boost. So if you think about the color light output to the white light output, where color light output is R plus G plus B, and you think of the color light output to white light output ratio of QD OLED, it's always one. While in the case of white light, uh, white OLEDs, what you have is the, in order to overcome the inherent lack of luminance of an OLED, they are using a white boost pixel. So it's a white plus RGB pixel. And what that means is that at peak brightness, in order to kind of give you the perception of a brighter screen, they have to use a much, they have to use the component of white light is actually 60%. So at 3%, uh, only 40% of the light is actually the RGB, but 60% is coming from the white pixel. When you think about this, what happens is that when you are trying to recreate bright and vivid colors, as soon as you have a higher white output or white pixel boost, you have a volumetric collapse of the uh, color. 
So you are unable to create and that's why you experience kind of washed out or faded colors with a traditional OLED. On the other side, the QD OLED, one, we are use, creating color using color conversion. So you have a blue uh, OLED that is then creating red and green by down converting it using quantum dots. So you get pure RGB, thin and tall spectral density cones. And these are being combined uh, across the luminosity range. And because of having this additional, let's say, headroom, because each primary is a high luminance primary, if you look at just pure RGB, you will see that the QD OLEDs are almost three to five times brighter on an individual RGB level. And that's what creates this exceptional 3D color space, which is critical for your HDR experience. Another uh, big plus point that I noticed when testing the TVs uh, last year was screen uniformity. Uh, you know, it, it seems to be completely clean. How have you achieved that? So that's a combination of two things. One is the advanced material we are using, which is you know the, the blue OLEDs, which gets better with the new one. Secondly, the fact that uh, the quantum dots are much easier because the, um, uh, the, the quantum dots are kind of more uniform in their performance as opposed to a deposition or any of the other OLED manufacturing process. So combine these two kind of give you that basic fundamental to create a more uniform display. Of course, this is enhanced by our own QA and what we call luminance and color correction algorithm as part of our manufacturing process, which ensures that every QD OLED meets the highest standard of screen uniformity, and that's what you have experienced in our previous uh, generation, and which will continue into the third generation, uh, the second generation. And one of the big things for our users at AV Forums is image accuracy, as the creator intended and so on. And we had a demonstration with a BVM 300 through there, which for people that don't know is a grading monitor that's used by professionals. And you were comparing how close QD got to that monitor. What's the feedback been from the film industry and, and professionals that you've shown the technology to? Oh, fantastic. Um, so I had the opportunity to present the QD OLEDs uh, at the American Society of Cinematographers uh, at their annual technology showcase event in October. It was one of the probably, um, it was a fantastic event, uh, meeting some of the greatest content creators. Um, and what stood out was exactly what you mentioned, the experience. They were absolutely amazed how close a commercial or a consumer product got to their own professional, which retails for, I don't know, 30, 40,000, 50,000. And X300s are now discontinued, so there's a premium. Um, and there are two reasons for it. One, we, like we mentioned, you know, the color is, you know, the color consistency, the color accuracy, the uniformity is consistent right from low gray level. So you have those shadow details all the way to the bright. So this was something that they really loved. Now they have a wider canvas, whether it's in a 3D color space or even in the 2D color space, so they can recreate their imagination on a screen uh, only with the QD OLED. So this, it, it had a phenomenal response. And when you were talking about um, you know, upping the brightness in terms of peak brightness and so on, um, that's obviously not in the calibrated modes, but if calibrated to D65, what kind of figures are you expecting from QD this year? I think it will still be in the 10% 1300. Uh, at least I've only had one test done with the calibrated, uh, and i am actually not done it myself. So, But this is the feedback I got. It's still going to be 30% brighter than our previous models. And one little bit of negative from last year was uh, when light hit the screens on the QD OLEDs, um, it looked grey, not black, like uh, you, you know, competing yeah. models. What have you done this year to try and get around that? That's a great question. So yes, in the last year model, what we use, what we called our AR second generation, the 2023 models are now equipped with AR fifth generation. Uh, as you know, the AR is actually made up of three uh, layers. You have the low reflection, high reflection, and a hard coat. And basically, one of the things we have done is we have finely tuned the material. So we have revamped the material used in these layers, which ensures a more compatibility and more collaboration between these layers, which ensures even less light reflection. So you will experience perceptually it will be a more neutral tone. and 
combined with the fact that we have increased our brightness, you're going to have a fantastic experience on HDR. And for those that are sitting on the fence uh, over the last couple of years looking at technology, why should they consider a 2023 QD OLED as their next TV? Sure. So I think if I had to give you three reasons, number one is the HDR experience. Um, especially with the 77 and 65, it's going to be a completely um, spectacular and the cinematic depth perception that you can get with the QD OLED is going to be unmatched. The color range, the details, everything is going to be popping out. The second thing is these are improved panels, so you can buy with even more confidence. And third, they are power efficient. So, you know, guilt free, you can binge as much as you want, knowing you're getting the best experience, you're getting the best technology that is eco friendly. So, it's great for you and it's great for the world. And just one final thing, uh, last year there was a, a few models that came out to market that were pretty thin and they ended up bending a little bit in, in, with the packaging that was used and so on. So again, what have you done to try and improve the, the, the rigidity of the panel? So our panels are built to kind of give the flexibility to the final brand. Uh, and I think that's something that the brands, uh, I think, have appreciated or got that feedback and that's something they will have to look into. Uh, but I think from a panel perspective, uh, it's all about the performance, it's about the quality of the experience, and that's where you will see the QD OLED shining through. And just to wrap up, um, we're going to get eco, uh, because the EU are bringing tough regulations in yes. terms of power consumption, the UK are still following that. Um, so in terms of getting the best out of the TV and so on, what have you done in terms of power consumption? Yeah, so power consumption uh, has been significantly reduced. So we have moved our, what we call the energy efficiency index from 1.1 to 0 0.9. And what that does is that, and, and if you think about it, we've actually increased the brightness by more than 30%. We're firing RGB pixels. All of this is happening. You have advanced AI kind of monitoring and maintaining your picture quality. All of this, but also ensured a better energy efficiency index. So as a package, it's a much more uh, environmentally responsible design uh, for the consumers that meets and exceeds uh, these standards that you mentioned. And in terms of the brands who are interested in taking on QD OLED, um, are you happy with those that have signed up and, and do you think there'll be even more coming on board? Sure. So that's something I cannot reveal at this point. But I'm very excited about what 2023 holds. I think there's a lot of good news uh, that will be shared, I think, at the right time.